Finding a chicken coop that perfectly fits your needs can be pretty hard. That's why today I'm gonna to give you the top five reasons a garden shed just like this one here behind me makes the perfect chicken coop. The first reason a garden shed makes a good chicken coop is the cost. A chicken coop this size, a normal chicken coop this size is gonna cost anywhere from a thousand dollars all the way up to tens of thousands of dollars. They get very expensive very quickly and it gets pretty daunting if you want to have a decent sized flock. Here at my house, we have the lifetime store just up the street from us and you can buy this exact same shed for $1,200. Or you can do what we did and we actually got onto KSL, which is our local classifieds. It's similar to something like a Craigslist. So get onto your local classifieds, whether it be Facebook, Craigslist, KSL, whatever it might be. And if you look hard enough and long enough, a lot of times you can find a garden shed for pretty cheap. This one here behind me, we actually bought for $100. We had to go pick it up and kind of transport it. And that was a whole mess of its own. So there is some effort that needs to be made to get these moved if you're buying them used. Do I have a bug on my hat? So what you can do is you can take a whole crew of people over, you can put a flatbed right up next to the shed. Most of these sheds you can just pick up, put on a flatbed, strap it down, and you're good to go. What you can also do is you can take it apart, especially these vinyl sheds, these, these plastic sheds. They are very, very easy to disassemble and reassemble. I don't really recommend doing that with a wooden shed because we tried that too and it didn't work. We ended up taking it to the dump instead of my house because it wasn't going to go back together. But if you find a good wooden shed and you have the people, pull a flatbed up to it, pick it up with 10, 15 people. People, put it on the put it on the flatbed bring it to your house drop it back off it's it's difficult but it's not impossible I will say that about a month after I found this one I found a brand new one in the box about 50 miles away from me and that was another it was another one for a hundred dollars that was still in the box they are there it depends on your area where you live I've talked to a lot of people that have been able to find sheds like this but I've also talked to a lot of people that have been looking for months and months not able to find them I'm gonna put links down in the description for this shed that I have this exact shed that I have here behind me this shed right here it's an eight foot by ten foot shed to me it is the absolute perfect size to do everything I wanted to do with it and that brings us to step two which is everything in here is customizable when you set up a shed it is a blank slate you build the shed and it is empty you don't have any nesting boxes you don't have a water you don't have a feeder you have nothing which is a good thing if you're someone like me and you want to do all that by yourself if you buy a you know a really massive kit coop something that you're paying a lot of money for you don't really have the options of making it customizable you don't get to pick where the nesting boxes go and pick what kind of feeder and water you have the shed makes it is big enough that i can put everything inside the shed i don't have to have everything outside of the shed where the chickens have to go outside to eat it so during the winter if they're cold outside they can come inside they can get a little bit of warmth they can get their food their drinks, their, they can lay their eggs. Everything is done inside the coop and I love it. I'm about to show you all the different customizations we've done, but I'm just gonna touch on them briefly. I've made videos for literally everything that has to do with this build, everything. And I'll show you where to find all those videos later in this video. Over here we have our water and this is just a bucket that we put some nipples on. And it's a little dirty right now, but you get the gist. They hit the nipples the water comes out we also have our feeding bucket and this thing we put the feed down there in the bottom this can hold two or three bags of feed so it lasts quite a long time and we were able to do this diy as well i absolutely love this feeder the roost that we have is just a roosting ladder that we lean up against the wall we put some cinder blocks down there in the bottom to kind of keep it steady and it works extremely well for us we have the nesting boxes and the nesting boxes were actually brought home by my wife she found them at walmart and just realized how perfect they were for nesting boxes. We've got a few eggs in here that I need to bring inside, but these are absolutely just amazing nesting boxes. Everything about this coop is customizable. When you build it, it is a blank slate. You can figure out what kind of food and water you want to do, how you want to do your nesting boxes. You can cut a hole in the wall and put the nesting boxes to where they're accessible from the outside. For me, I don't mind just walking in here and collecting the eggs there. Actually, it's more my, uh, my children love collecting the eggs. The roosting bars are very easy to just pull out and clean or you can actually put hinges on the top. You can lift the bottom up, hang it up from the top and kind of clean out from underneath it. Everything in here is just really easy to work around and work with. One issue you are gonna run into if you're looking at using a garden shed for your chicken coop is the insulation. These aren't insulated very well. The plastic coops honestly are a little bit more insulated than people think because they are, are double walled. So the walls, it has a thing of plastic and then it has air in the middle and then another thing of plastic. So they are insulated better than 
people may think, but they do get hot. The way you can kind of work around that is you can add your own ventilation. So we added some ventilation here on the side, over here on this side. We did a whole video on that, which I'll tell you about later. You, you will most likely have to add some additional ventilation. So keep that in mind, especially if you're in a warmer climate. If you are even more worried about it, you can go further than I went. You can add little fans and stuff into it. You can, you can kind of go all out, but you don't have to. We get 110 degrees here in Utah and yes, it does get warm in here. I mean, it was 90 degrees today and I'm standing in here, no issue at all. It doesn't get all that hot in here. So if you're worried about the heat being too much in one of these plastic sheds, as long as you're adding some additional ventilation, it's not a big deal. Another thing you might want to add to your shed if you aren't allowed to have free range chickens or if you just don't want to have free range chickens is a chicken run. This is something that was honestly really easy to build. We just built it out of two by fours and we just kind of built the, the structure. We put some fencing around it. We put a gate up front so we can get in and out of it. It's tall enough for us to walk in and kind of stretch out and, and be able to move around in without our head being, you know, ducking down and stuff. You will want to make sure that it's secure from predators down around the bottom. You want to make sure you have a chicken door so that way the birds can come in and out. We have an automatic chicken door that comes up and down with the sun. We also had a DIY chicken door that was really awesome, kind of on a pulley system. And that's something we have videos about as well. And I will tell you about those later. For us, we aren't really allowed to have free range chickens here. So that's why we have ours. Come on girls. There you go. And if you already have chickens, you should definitely think about getting them some, some Grub Terra. This is something I've been using for quite a long time now, a couple of years, and it's something that I will continue to use. This is by far the, uh, the best chicken treat that you can buy. Now we're kind of down to the crumbs here because I'm at the end of this one, but it's just kind of a like really nutritious snack for the birds. It's black soldier fly larva. Grub Terra is a really awesome company to, to support. Everything they do is really sustainable. They get the food for, for the soldier fly larva. They get that from sustainable sources, you know, going to restaurants and stuff around, the, around where they're at. Really awesome company. If you are interested in getting some of this stuff, I'll have a link down in the description. The third reason that a garden shed makes a great chicken coop is the size. This is a chicken castle once you have have it done. It is hard to find big chicken coops unless you're making them 100% DIY. Doing it this way, it gives you a very, very large chicken coop for halfway DIY. Once you have the shed, you just have to worry about the stuff that kind of goes into it and setting it up for the chickens, which is very easy to do. I'm not a handyman whatsoever. My friends make fun of me because I don't have tools and I don't do manly things. I just hang out with my chickens and garden all day. I was able to build this shed with the help of my cougar, as well as build everything on the inside, which I did myself. All I did, I did it all. It's very, very easy to do. For the amount of money that you spend and the effort you put into it, there is no better way to get a chicken coop this size. It is perfect for a big flock of chickens. Reason number four is the deep litter method. This is a perfect coop for the deep litter method. It makes it so easy to do everything. In fact, right now, I'm kind of to the point where I need to add some more bedding. If you don't know about the deep litter method, it is one of the cleanest ways to keep your chicken coop. It keeps it from smelling. It keeps it from kind of getting nasty. You can take your bedding out when you're done and you can use it as a compost for your garden. It helps with insulation, kind of giving the girls a place to dust bathe when they're inside the coop. It gives them healthy bacteria growing in their coop. It is just a very good way to have a, a chicken coop that is low maintenance. It's not something that you have to clean all the time. I clean my chicken coop twice a year. That is it. And if you don't know what the deep litter method is, I have another video on that. I literally have a video for everything that has to do with the chicken coop. I'll tell you about that later. And one thing about these sheds that makes it super easy to do the deep litter method is there's a shelf that goes on the wall. So for us, we took the shelving right here and we put it up against the door. So yes, we have to step over it when we come in and out, but it also creates a barrier to where your bedding, you can pile up your bedding in here and make a really, really deep bedding without ever having to worry about all of it spilling out your front door and wasting it all. If the shed that you have doesn't come with one of these shelves, this is the shelf that just was supposed to be on the wall right here, but instead of putting it on the wall, I put it right here on the floor. If it doesn't have one of these, get yourself something like a two by six, two by eight, just lay it right there in the front. You don't have to drill it in, nothing like that. Just set it there and it will stay there. And then you can start filling it with some deep litter. The fifth reason is the ease of cleaning it. This is so incredibly easy to clean, especially if you get one of the plastic ones. What I do is I come in here and I get my roosting ladder 
water and I pick it up and I walk it out of the coop. I take my food bin, I take my nesting boxes, I take my water, my water bucket, I pull everything out. I scrape out all of my deep bedding, I put it in my compost. And what that does, it leaves me with an empty shed and I can just come in here with the hose, the garden hose, I can spray everything down. I can completely soak this thing down, keep your doors open and let it air dry. It won't take very long, let it air dry and then throw all of your stuff back in, throw some new bedding in and you are good to go. This thing is one of the easiest chicken coops you can ever have to clean. You don't have to deal with any of those weird like trays that pull out of some of these other chicken coops. You don't have to worry about the constant cleaning of the bedding since we're doing the deep bedding. The entire inside of this and outside is waterproof. It's amazing. Now let's get to the really important stuff. If you are interested in the nitty gritty, how I did everything I did with this build, this entire coop, everything that's in it, the inside, the outside, everything. Everything I've done to this coop, I made videos about and you can find those videos in this playlist right here. Go and watch this playlist, see how I did everything. I have multiple versions of the chicken door, so it kind of gives you some options on different ways you can do your chicken doors. The water bucket, the food barrel, the roosting ladder, the chicken doors, the coop itself, everything I've done is in this playlist. Go watch everything on that playlist and I'll see you there.